In the world of healthcare, there's a little known secret that impacts millions of lives every day. It's a hidden truth that often goes unnoticed, lurking beneath the surface of modern medicine. In February 2021, the FDA's William Maisel, MD, MPH, Director of Office of Product Evaluation and Quality warned, while pulse oximeters may be useful in estimating blood oxygen levels, these devices have limitations that can result in inaccurate readings. So, Join us on a journey as we dive deep into the pulse oximetry paradox. We will unveil the untold stories, challenge the status quo, and explore the groundbreaking innovations that are reshaping the future of healthcare. So join us at NovaMind as we present the highest level of evidence and share the darkness of our past research in this three-part series on the bias of pulse oximeter measurements and the dangers patients face when healthcare professionals rely on it. This is episode one, the evidence of the pulse ox bias. The objectives of learning are the learner will be able to identify scientific research indicating that pulse oximeters may not accurately display results as well as understand the FDA statement regarding the limitations and accuracy of results when using a pulse oximeter. I wanted to start by asking Does anybody remember the Human Genome Project? It was one of the world's largest collaborative biological projects, and it has led to significant advances in biotechnology and genomic medicine. The Human Genome Project, HGP, was an international scientific research project with the primary goal of mapping and understanding the genes of the human species collectively known as the genome. It was launched in 1990 and completed in 2003. The HGP aimed to determine the sequence of nucleotide-based pairs that make up the human DNA and to identify and map the approximately 20 to 25,000 genes of the human genome from both a physical and functional standpoint. The completion of HGP has provided the foundation for exploring the genetic basis of various human diseases and has opened the door to personalized medicine where treatments can be tailored to an individual's genetic profile. The results, though, of the Human Genome Project had astounding revelations. It has thoroughly debunked one of the most enduring myths perpetuated by colonialism, uncovering a profound truth about our shared humanity that challenges long-standing beliefs ingrained in both medicine and society. And that is biologically or genetically, race cannot be identified once the superficial layer of skin is removed. The evidence shows that we are all more fundamentally alike than different, underscoring the truth that there is no superior race. As a human species, we all share common humanity deeply interconnected through our genetic makeup. To clarify, there are no genetic markers that are found exclusively in one race and not in others. While certain genetic traits can be more common in some populations due to geographical location and ancestry, these traits do not delineate a clear-cut race boundary. The evidence further supports the view that race is not a biological concept. There are profound social implications of genetic findings. The understanding that race has no genetic or a scientific basis does not diminish the real social, political, and economic impacts of racial categorization. Acknowledging race as a social construct is essential for addressing racism and its effects rather than reinforcing arbitrary biological distinctions. Section 1, the pulse oximeter in healthcare. Pulse oximeter is a standard method for non-invasively measuring blood oxygen levels, but it may not always accurately reflect true oxygenation levels. Notably, this inaccuracy tends to occur more frequently in patients belonging to racial or ethnic minority groups. These measurement errors lead to differences in clinical care and contributing to healthcare disparities in those patients. 
So what is the pulse ox? Well, the pulse ox is defined as a small, non-invasive medical device that measures the level of oxygen saturation in the person's blood and their heart rate. It typically clips on to a thin part of the patient's body, like the fingertip or the earlobe, and it uses light beams to estimate the amount of oxygen in the blood. The device provides a quick, painless, and reliable way to monitor the oxygenation of a patient's hemoglobin, a crucial measure in many medical scenarios, from routine physical exams to critical care. It is a standard of care in most of the world, monitoring O2 sats under anesthesia in developed countries. It's used in babies, children, adults, and geriatric patients. It's also used in the ICU, the ED, the ambulances, anywhere in the hospital, and in outpatient settings such as the doctor's office, it is a vital sign. So how does the pulse ox measure oxygen levels in our blood? Deoxygenated and oxygenated hemoglobin absorb light at different wavelengths, 660 and 940 nanometers respectively. The absorbed light is processed by a proprietary algorithm in the pulse oximeter to display a saturation value. The pulse oximeter probe has two light emitters and one light detector or sensor aligned to capture the light on the other side of the tissue bed or the reflection of light from a site such as the forehead. A pulse oximeter uses two small lights that shine through a part of the body, like the fingertip or the earlobe, to measure oxygen levels. This is done when one side emits the light, and then the other side, a detector, measures how much the light passes through or bounces back from the skin. Now let's talk about SpO2 and SaO2. The values for SpO2 and SaO2 both measure blood oxygen saturation levels, indicating how much oxygen your blood is carrying as a percentage of the total maximum. However, they differ in how they are measured. SpO2, which is the pulse oximeter saturation, represents just an estimation of the arterial oxygen saturation obtained non-invasively through a pulse oximeter. SpO2 is the preferred method for continuous monitoring and non-invasive needs. SpO2 readings are widely used because this method is quick and convenient and doesn't require a blood sample. SaO2, or arterial oxygen saturation is a direct measure of the percentage of oxygen saturated hemoglobin compared to the total hemoglobin in the blood. It is obtained through an arterial blood gas, ABG test, which involves taking blood samples from an artery. SAO2 is considered more accurate since it measures oxygen saturation directly from the blood, but it is an invasive procedure. SAO2 is used when precise oxygen saturation levels are critical for patient management, like in the ICU when they're on a ventilator. I have on the screen two arms holding hands. One is of an African American and the other is of a white patient. Now, looking at that, do you believe that the light emitters of the pulse oximeter would pass through or reflect back equally for both individuals despite the pigmentation? For example, would the pulse oximeter display the same results if both had an arterial blood gas saturation of 92%. Let's look at the research. On to section two, the issue of skin pigmentation and the device inaccuracy. By definition, bias in the pulse oximeter refers to the consistent deviation in the measurement of oxygen saturation going in one direction. For a device with a plus two bias, there tends to be an overestimate of SaO2 by an average of 2%. What's interesting is even a device without bias can show significant inaccuracies fluctuating both above and below the actual SaO2 level. This term is called precision, and in this context, it describes how spread out 
or scattered these inaccuracies are, with a higher precision indicating a greater spread of scattering of error. Now, the ARMS metric captures both bias and random error. The ARMS, or ARMS value, is the accuracy root mean square. It is a value and is crucial as it encompasses both the bias and the random inaccuracies of a device. It gives us an overall picture of a pulse oximeter's accuracy. It's calculated using a formula that considers how far off each SpO2 reading is from the actual SaO2. Devices with a higher arms value are considered less accurate. The FDA mandates that for a pulse oximeter to be approved, its arms value must be less than 3% across oxygen saturation levels ranging from 70 to 100%. The arms value can be thought of similarly to a standard deviation. For example, a device with an arms of 3% implies that a reading of 92% might actually represent an oxygen saturation anywhere between 89 and 95% for 68% of the readings. However, the standard becomes less clear when facing in systematic biases seen in patients with darker skin, complicating the interpretation of arm values under such conditions. Pulmonary and critical care expert Dr. Michael S.J.O.D.I.N.G., which I will be referring to as Dr. S. and colleagues from the University of Michigan presented UM research on racial bias in pulse oximeters to the FDA Advisors Committee on the Bias of Pulse Oxys. Currently, the FDA recommends that pulse oximeters accuracy be evaluated on a diverse sample group, including at least 10 individuals differing in age, gender, and crucially, with 2 or 15% of the sample being darkly pigmented. This is due to the potential variation in device accuracy based on skin pigmentation. However, there is no mandate for our manufacturers to report device performance across these diverse groups separately. So emphasizing the need for transparent reporting, Dr. S and his team carried out research published in the American Journal of Respiratory and Critical Care Medicine. They utilized a simulation to assess the implications of including individuals with darker skin and pulse oximeter testing following the FDA's recommendations. The study did focus on whether a pulse oximeter, which is expected to keep an arms below 3%, lighter skinned individuals would maintain this accuracy standard when included darker skinned participants. The findings reveal that significant measurement errors ranging from 3 to 5 percent were observed in individuals with darker skin. Indeed, real inaccuracies for darker skinned individuals were not typically disclosed with arms reaching up to 3.6 or 5.4 percent. This research underscores a crucial gap in the regulatory guidelines, stressing the importance of providing detailed performance data across different demographic groups. Such transparency is essential to ensure that reliability and safety of medical devices for all patients. I have here the distribution graph of oxygen saturation and saturation rate less than 88% when the pulse ox is rating 92%. A is the pulse ox with that 2% random error, as you can see. But if you go to B, which is the overlaid distribution of a pulse oximeter with 2% random error and 1% bias, and as you can see, there's a larger difference there. And moving forward, over C, you see overlaid distribution of pulse ox with a 2.5 random error and 1% bias, and now you can see that overlay is 12% there. I had no idea personally while caring for my patients that there was going to be such a significant difference in the accuracy between my patients due to their pigmentation. Dr. S's study from the University of Michigan was not the only one that shows these discrepancies. Let's talk about the recently published 2023 article in Journal of American Medical Association, where Dr. Fauzi and colleagues published the study, which was an extensive study where researchers examined the accuracy of pulse oximeters, a critical tool in managing the COVID-19 patients. This was across different racial and ethnic groups. 
This retrospective analysis utilized data from patients diagnosed with COVID-19 across numerous HCA facilities in the U.S. The study's focus was the phenomenon of occult hypoxemia, where pulse oximeters overestimate oxygen saturation levels, a discrepancy more pronounced in Black and Hispanic patients compared to the white patients. Specifically, occult hypoxemia was detected in 18.3% of Black patients, 20.9% of the Hispanic patients, and at a significantly less rate, white patients at 13%. This disparity in oximeter accuracy suggests a systemic bias affecting minority groups potentially leading to delayed or inappropriate medical interventions for COVID-19. While crucially, the study found that such inaccuracies in pulse oximeter readings were associated with delayed administration of COVID-19 therapies at a higher rate of hospital readmissions among the minority patients. This delay poses significant risks impacting patient outcomes by potentially exacerbating the severity of their condition. The next study that I wanted to review was published in 2022 by Gottlieb et al. in the Journal of American Medical Association's retrospective cohort study, including 3,069 patients in the ICU. The mean age of these patients were 66.9 years old, including a diverse racial and ethnic composition. This included 83 Asian, 207 Black and 112 Hispanic, while there was 2,667 white participants. The study investigated whether racial and ethnic disparities in the supplemental oxygen administration are associated with discrepancies in pulse oximeter performance among different groups conducted with those 3,069 ICU patients were patients that identified as Asian, Black, Hispanic, or white. The research found statistically significant differences in pulse oximeter readings and supplemental oxygen administration rates among racial and ethnic minority groups compared to white patients. Specifically concerning was the multivariable linear regression shown. All Asian patients had higher adjusted SpO2 readings than their actual hemoglobin oxygen saturation indicated in their blood. Received, they also received significantly less supplemental oxygen compared to the white patients despite having similar medical needs. Black patients also experienced higher SpO2 readings on their pulse oximeter compared to the hemoglobin oxygen saturation of their blood. They were also administered less supplemental oxygen on average compared to their white counterparts. Hispanic patients also showed higher SpO2 readings for their actual hemoglobin oxygen saturation levels. They also received lower rates of supplemental oxygen compared to the white patients. The third review that I have on the screen is by Cabanas et al. and published in 2022. It's a systemic review identifying critical findings regarding the influence of skin pigmentation on pulse oximeter accuracy, incorporating various studies that have explored this issue. What some of the studies covered in this systematic review include the studies I'm reviewing here, but I wanted to give you an overall result from the systemic review and bibliometric analysis, which says pulse oximeter performance in dark skin population may lead to overestimations with increased incidence of occult hypoxemia and risk of negative health effects from diseases like COVID-19. That systemic review also talked about pigmentation's influence on pulse oximetry and the accuracy of the systemic review and bibliometrical analysis confirmed by studies that there is three times higher prevalence of occult hypoxemia found in dark skin patients. A study on hypoxemia conditions by Bicker et al. published way back in 2005 showing that this is not new information. Study conditions in the evaluation of 21 subjects, 11 dark skinned and 10 light skinned, uh, P.E. Becker et al. observed overestimations of SpO2 in the dark-skinned individuals, especially at lower saturation 
saturation levels, demonstrating the linear increase in the overestimation as the SpO2 levels decrease. Just to review a few other findings, I wanted to show you that Dr. S also published another study in 2023, used two large cohorts that were greater than 10,000 patients with, it said in the article, 14 to 20% dark skin patients. In the study, it found that dark skin patients with pulse ox SpO2 readings that read 92 to 96% were three times more likely, that's 11.7% more likely to have an actual arterial oxygen saturation below 88%. That's where your hidden hypoxemia is. And that's compared to light skin patients who also had it, but their rate was only 3.6%, highlighting a significant discrepancy in pulse oximetry accuracy just based on skin color. Finer at all published in 2007 and concluded that while pulse oximeter inaccuracy is reasonably small at SpO2 levels over 80% for dark skin individuals, a bias of up to 8% was detected at lower saturation levels. Well, this is the end of part one. Make sure to check out part two where we explore the dark path of US history and research that has led to these discrepancies. We explore to understand why certain populations do not trust the healthcare system, and part three, where we explore the latest technologies and the future of healthcare.